Imagine a $100 billion city rising from the Caspian Sea, only to vanish before it even began. Azerbaijan planned Khazar Islands, a mega city to rival Dubai, with skyscrapers, luxury homes, and even the world's tallest tower. But financial struggles and unrealistic goals led to its collapse. What went wrong? This video uncovers the failed dream. In 2010, Azerbaijan announced one of its most ambitious projects, the Khazar Islands. This grand plan aimed to transform the Caspian Sea with 41 artificial islands, creating a luxurious city designed for over a million residents. The project was marketed as a symbol of the country's economic strength, innovation and vision for the future. The government and developers promised a futuristic paradise filled with high-end homes, shopping malls, entertainment centers, and even the world's tallest tower. The idea was to establish a global tourism and business hub that would attract wealthy investors and visitors from around the world. The Khazar Islands were supposed to redefine urban living, offering an environment that blended modern luxury with cutting-edge technology. The concept was inspired by other successful artificial island projects, like those in Dubai, and aimed to put Azerbaijan on the map as a leader in urban innovation. At the heart of this dream was the Azerbaijan Tower, a skyscraper planned to rise over 1,000 meters, making it the tallest in the world. This massive structure was meant to symbolize the country's ambition and determination to compete on the world stage. Alongside the tower, the islands were planned to feature state-of-the-art infrastructure, including an advanced transportation system, luxury hotels and entertainment venues. Everything about the project screamed exclusivity and grandeur. The government presented the Khazar Islands as a key part of Azerbaijan's economic future. Officials claimed it would generate thousands of jobs, boost tourism and attract foreign investments. The plan was to make Azerbaijan a major player in the luxury real estate market, competing with the likes of Dubai and Singapore. Investors were drawn to the idea, and many saw it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. However, turning such a bold vision into reality required more than just ambition. The project needed massive financial backing, advanced engineering, and long-term commitment. Constructing artificial islands in the Caspian Sea was not an easy task. It required extensive land reclamation, advanced infrastructure, and solutions to environmental concerns. Despite these challenges, the project moved forward with confidence, promising to transform Azerbaijan's economic landscape. In the beginning, there was optimism and excitement. Promotional videos showcased stunning designs, promising a futuristic city where luxury and power met. The idea of living in a man-made paradise appealed to many, and the media was filled with reports about how the Khazar Islands would redefine modern living. But large-scale projects often face obstacles, and reality does not always match the dream. As time went on, questions arose about the project's feasibility. The world had seen ambitious plans fail before, and critics began to wonder if the Khazar Islands would suffer the same fate. Could Azerbaijan truly pull off such an enormous undertaking? Was there enough funding, expertise, and long-term planning to bring this vision to life? Bold visions require more than just ambition. They need flawless execution. While the dream of the Khazar Islands was grand, making it a reality depended on careful planning, financial stability, and the ability to overcome obstacles. The question remained, would this project stand the test of time, or would it become another failed dream? The initial cost projection for the project was set at $100 billion. However, from the beginning, there were doubts about whether it was truly feasible. Building something of this scale required not just money, but also long-term commitment and careful planning. Many experts questioned whether such an ambitious plan could succeed, given the risks involved. The massive cost meant that securing funding would be a challenge. It wasn't just about finding the money, it was about convincing investors that the project was worth the risk. Investors played a crucial role in bringing the project to life. The government of Azerbaijan was one of the main backers, as it saw the project as a symbol of progress and national pride. Officials believed it could transform the country's image and boost its economy. However, government support alone was not enough. The private sector was also needed to make the project possible. Several companies expressed interest, seeing potential profits in real estate, tourism, and business opportunities. 
Some investors were willing to take the risk, hoping for high returns in the future. However, others remained skeptical. Azerbaijan's economy played a significant role in shaping the project's future. The country had long relied on its oil and gas resources to drive economic growth. When oil prices were high, Azerbaijan experienced a boom, and projects like this seemed possible. However, crude oil prices started to fall, and this created financial difficulties. The government, which depended heavily on oil revenue, had less money to invest. This made it harder to secure the necessary funds. Without strong economic support, the project faced uncertainty. The falling oil prices forced the country to rethink its priorities. The project can be compared to other large-scale developments, such as the World Islands in Dubai. That ambitious project also faced financial and logistical challenges. Initially, it attracted significant investment, but over time, many of the islands remained undeveloped due to economic difficulties. Similarly, the Azerbaijan project faced doubts about its long-term viability. The World Islands showed that even in a wealthy city like Dubai, mega-projects could struggle. This comparison highlighted the risks involved in undertaking such grand developments. If a well-funded place like Dubai faced problems, what were the chances of success for a country with an oil-dependent economy facing financial challenges? Money wasn't the only issue. Politics played a role too. Government policies, international relations, and internal political decisions influenced the project's progress. A project of this scale required strong leadership, clear regulations and cooperation between different sectors. Any political instability or policy changes could delay or even halt the project. While financing was a major obstacle, political factors added another layer of complexity. Even with the necessary funds, political disagreements or regulatory issues could create significant roadblocks. In the end, financing the impossible was not just about securing money. It was about navigating economic challenges, attracting investors and managing political realities. The project faced numerous hurdles, and its future remained uncertain. Whether it would succeed or become another failed mega-project depended on how these factors were managed. Corruption concerns have long been an issue in Azerbaijan, and the construction of major projects has not been free from controversy. Allegations of mismanagement and elite profiteering have raised serious questions about where funds were going. Many officials and business leaders were accused of using government projects for personal gain, directing public money into private accounts. These allegations created mistrust among citizens who wondered if the country's wealth was being used properly. The lack of transparency made it difficult to track how resources were allocated, fueling suspicions that corruption was slowing progress. The economic downturn in 2014 added to these problems. The global oil crash significantly impacted Azerbaijan's economy, which heavily depends on oil exports. The price of oil dropped sharply, cutting a major source of government revenue. This sudden financial hit made it harder for the government to fund large-scale projects. At the same time, the Azerbaijani manat, the national currency, lost value. The manat crisis caused inflation to rise, making everyday goods more expensive for citizens. The government had to make tough financial decisions, and some infrastructure projects faced budget cuts. The economic crisis forced officials to reconsider their spending priorities. As financial pressures increased, the government began shifting its focus to other infrastructure projects. While the construction of certain projects was initially a priority, new demands emerged. The government started investing in different areas, such as transportation, tourism and social programs. This change in direction led to a reduction in funding for previously planned developments. Some projects were delayed, while others were scaled down. Officials justified these changes by arguing that Azerbaijan needed to diversify its economy. Instead of relying solely on oil revenue, they aimed to invest in different industries. However, critics argued that these shifts in focus slowed down important construction efforts. With financial and political hurdles stacking up, construction faced another major problem – engineering. The combination of economic struggles, shifting priorities and corruption concerns made it difficult to maintain momentum. The lack of consistent funding meant that engineers and planners had to work under unpredictable conditions. Some contractors struggled to get paid on time, and supply chains were disrupted. These challenges delayed progress and increased costs. 
the project that once symbolized national pride now faced serious setbacks. Despite these obstacles, the government continued to push forward with development plans. Officials sought alternative funding sources, including foreign investments and public-private partnerships. However, securing new investments was not easy. Investors were cautious due to economic instability and concerns about corruption. Some international organizations questioned whether the projects would be completed as planned. These doubts created further uncertainty, making it even harder to attract financial support. In the face of these difficulties, Azerbaijan's leadership remained determined to move forward. They emphasized the importance of infrastructure development for the country's future. Yet without stable financial backing and stronger anti-corruption measures, progress remained slow. Political and economic challenges continued to impact construction efforts, proving that large-scale projects require more than just ambition. They need financial stability, transparency, and careful planning. Building islands in the Caspian Sea came with serious engineering and environmental challenges. The idea seemed ambitious, but the reality of construction in such an environment proved difficult. Land reclamation was one of the biggest obstacles. The Caspian Sea is not like an ocean. Its unique conditions made traditional land-building techniques less effective. The water level fluctuates, which affects stability. The seabed is soft and muddy in many areas, making it hard to create a solid foundation. Engineers had to find ways to stabilize the land while dealing with constant shifts in water levels. This made the process slow and costly. Another major concern was the impact on the environment. The Caspian Sea is home to many species of fish, including the famous sturgeon that produces caviar. Changing the natural landscape threatened their habitats. Construction work disturbed marine life, affecting breeding and migration patterns. The process also led to pollution. Chemicals, waste, and sediments from construction entered the water, harming fish and other sea creatures. Coastal erosion was another issue. By building artificial islands, natural water currents changed. This increased erosion in some areas while causing sediment buildup in others. The long-term effects of these changes were hard to predict, but they pose serious risks. Infrastructure problems also became a major hurdle. A project of this scale needed strong roads, reliable water supply, and electricity. However, the remote location of the islands made it difficult to bring in materials and workers. Transporting construction equipment over water added to the cost and time. Water supply was another major issue. The Caspian Sea is salty, and freshwater sources were limited. Desalination plants were needed, but they required energy and maintenance. Powering the islands was another problem. Laying underwater cables was expensive, and relying on generators was not sustainable. Logistical failures further complicated the project. Transportation networks were not well developed, making it hard to move people and goods efficiently. Roads on the mainland were not designed to handle the heavy traffic needed for construction. Ports lacked the capacity to manage large shipments of materials. The islands also needed long-term transport solutions. Ferries and boats were necessary, but they were slow and unreliable in bad weather. Building bridges or tunnels was too expensive. These problems slowed progress and increased costs. With every challenge compounding, the grand vision started unraveling. The difficulties of land reclamation, environmental concerns, and infrastructure issues created setbacks. The challenges of building islands in the Caspian Sea proved greater than expected. By the mid-2010, the grand project that once promised to change the landscape had stalled. Construction sites stood still, with half-built structures gathering dust. What was supposed to be a thriving development turned into an abandoned dream. Deadlines kept getting pushed back and the progress that once looked promising became barely visible. For years, people had expected to see towering buildings and bustling activity, but instead they saw emptiness and neglect. Workers who once toiled day and night slowly disappeared, and the sounds of machinery faded away. One of the biggest reasons for the collapse was the withdrawal of investors. At first, the project had strong financial backing. Investors poured in money, hoping for high returns. But as delays mounted, they grew uneasy, the risks became too high, and their confidence in the project started to fade. Some investors pulled out their funds while others hesitated to put in more. 
Without fresh capital, the project struggled to move forward. Slowly, the financial support that once held it together crumbled, leaving behind an unfinished dream. The government, which once promoted the project with great enthusiasm, suddenly grew silent. Officials who once spoke of progress and success stopped mentioning it altogether. The media, which had covered every milestone in the early days, also fell quiet. News about the project became rare and questions from the public went unanswered. It was as if the billion-dollar plan had never existed. No official statements explained the slowdown, and speculation grew among those who had once believed in the vision. As time passed, the unfinished structures became reminders of broken promises. Roads that led to nowhere, empty lots and half-built towers stood as evidence of an ambition that had faded away. The dream of a modern thriving hub had turned into a ghost town of incomplete buildings. So what remains of this billion-dollar dream today? Azerbaijan had high hopes for its ambitious urban projects. The country wanted to create modern cities with stunning buildings and advanced infrastructure. However, these dreams have turned into empty lots and unfinished structures. Many construction sites are abandoned and there are no clear plans for the future. The excitement that once surrounded these projects has faded. Now, these areas stand as reminders of failed expectations and wasted resources. The financial loss is massive. The government and private investors poured huge sums of money into these projects, expecting them to bring economic growth. Instead, the incomplete developments have become financial burdens. The money that was meant to create thriving communities now sits in unfinished buildings and deserted streets. Investors who once believed in these projects have lost trust, and future investment in similar plans looks unlikely. Beyond money, Azerbaijan's credibility has taken a serious hit. The country had positioned itself as a rising economic power, capable of building world-class cities. However, the failure of these projects has damaged that image. International investors and businesses now question Azerbaijan's ability to deliver on its promises. Trust is hard to rebuild, and without it, attracting future investment becomes much more difficult. Other countries that once saw Azerbaijan as an example of rapid development may now hesitate to follow the same path. This failure is not just a local issue. It speaks to a larger problem with overly ambitious urban planning. Many countries dream of building futuristic cities, believing they will become economic and cultural hubs. However, without careful planning, realistic funding and strong management, these projects can quickly collapse. The situation in Azerbaijan is a warning to others. Grand plans are not enough. Proper execution, long-term strategy and financial responsibility are essential. The dream of modern cities should not turn into a nightmare of wasted money and broken promises. From grand dreams to abandoned hopes, this story ends with an expensive lesson. The Khazar Islands were supposed to be a great achievement, but ended in failure. This shows that big projects need strong plans to succeed. Mega projects promise a bright future, but without a solid base, they collapse. Leave your thoughts in the comments.